Trading is completely different from business. I've made uh, six figures from trading. Anna Skanderska is known as a successful trader who collaborates with the top professionals in the industry. And do you think like most of traders like uh, neglect these things? Yeah, it's very important. Should we go for the patient and the dream job or should we go for the resources one. Why is power so important for people? To people that are struggling with anxiety and stress and um, I would tell them like Welcome everybody to the channel again and uh, today that's a special day because it's my first English podcast and I'm so glad to do the English podcast with you. I met this person like a few weeks ago, a few days ago on the rooftop of this hotel and that was amazing conversation and I was like it would be a shame and it will be so selfish that you keep this information and this story for you and um, please can you introduce yourself? Of course. First of all, thank you so much for having me and for uh, giving this opportunity to, for me to share my story because I definitely believe that many people might get a lot of insights from my story and will be, get motivated. Um, so yeah, my name is Anna. I'm coming from North Macedonia originally, but I've lived in many different places in the world. Um, currently, I'm a digital nomad exploring uh, Southeast Asia. And um, yeah, I have been studying engineering in biotechnology. Um, I'm quite, <laughs> I can say that I'm a nerd. I love science. I love studying about different topics, especially science related. But um, in profession wise, I'm a trader, which is also another interesting and unique thing. So yeah, that's a short story about me. <laughs> yeah, it's a really short story and uh, we're gonna dig it. It's so interesting. Can you say to the audience, like how many languages do you speak? So I speak seven languages. That's crazy. <laughs> what are the, the seven languages like? And you... Yeah. So because you, you come from Macedonia, right? Yeah. So you have to study English, like straight like me, have to study English first. And then can, can you explain why like do you study, you, do you speak like seven languages at first? Yeah, yeah, sure. So my mother tongue is Macedonian. Um, that's what we speak at home. And then I learned Bulgarian and Serbo-Croatian by watching a TV series <laughs> uh, when, I was, uh, when I was a kid. And also we used to go to uh, Bulgaria quite often with my family for holidays. Yeah. Um, and Bulgarian and Serbo-Croatian are very close to my mother tongue. So it was very easy for me to just uh, absorb the language and new, to learn the new different words. Um, so those, that's how I got those two, like two additional languages and then English at school, of course. Um, and, um, uh, I speak also Turkish and the reason for that is because I was studying in a Turkish international high school. So some of my teachers didn't speak English. So I had to learn Turkish and I had a few subjects also in Turkish. Um, then, uh, I moved to Sweden. So I, uh, oh, I skipped the Russian. I learned also Russian in elementary school. <laughs> and, and then uh, Swedish, I moved to Sweden when I was 19 years old to um, study and live there. So that's how I learned Swedish as well. That's crazy. So okay. it's six right now, no? Uh, let me see. Uh, so Swedish, Turkish, Russian, Macedonian, the two first, like Serbian and... Uh, Serbian, Bulgarian, um, Russian, Turkish, English, Swedish, and like, yeah, if we count my mother tongue. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah. that's it. Can and you and say with Swedish, like with Swedish, um, I kind of like know Norwegian and Danish as well. Yeah, wow. Well, I, I don't speak it uh, well because the pronunciation is a little bit different, yeah. but I understand um, like Danish and Norwegian people when they're talking to me and they understand me if I speak oh to them in Swedish. That's crazy. So that's like seven and a half languages. <laughs> and can you say in Turkish, uh, let's subscribe to the channel? Oh, that's... I, I, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> subscribe. I don't know subscribe was not like a word. So honest though. Yeah. I can, I, I, I can <laughs> understand. So uh, just before we go straight into like the trading things and wow, I'm sorry about that. Uh, do, you, do you have like a tips for someone who's going to learn a language like me, for example? Like we are in Vietnam right now, right? Yeah. So I try to pick some Vietnamese and for example, I know it's a tonal language, but do you have like special nerd tips for to learn a language? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, first of all, I would say don't be afraid to speak. Like everyone's making mistakes and I know that many people think that 
they have to learn and know it perfectly in order to speak. They're kind of like embarrassed if they make mistakes, but that's the worst thing that you can do. Like the only way to learn a language is to use it as much as you can and make as many mistakes as you can, and that's how you learn. Um, and uh, another thing that is that helped me, for example, I learned Swedish in less than a year, uh, and it was not like just basic, basic Swedish, it was C1 level that was uh, required for universities. So I went from not knowing a word in Swedish to speaking fluent Swedish in just a year. And the way I did it was by definitely putting a lot of effort in studying. Yeah. Um, all the time, uh, even like subconsciously training my mind to listen to the language and to the pronunciation. So I would play music in the background. I would watch movies in English, for example, with Swedish si subtitle or Swedish movies with English subtitles so that I can like still pick up some words. Did you sleep with these language learning things? Um, I was falling asleep with them. Wow, okay, crazy, yeah. yeah. Um, and then another thing that helped me the most to learn it so, so fast was I was working as an out there when I was in Sweden. So I was oh. communicating with the children kids. all the yeah. time. Best, best things. Ever. Definitely, because they use a simple, like, like simple words. Yeah. They don't use any advanced words. Yeah. Uh, like their language is very basic. There's a lions. Uh, all you <laughs> yeah. say lions. In, all you say lions in Turkish this time. <laughs> oh my God! You caught me now. Like uh, um, <laughs> lion in Turkish. Oh, I, I, I can't remember. I think Vietnamese is, is like grrr, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, yeah, so that's so interesting. Turkish is like a language that I learned 10 years ago, so I have to like kind of like yeah. re refresh no. my memory a little bit. I completely understand. Yeah. Like if you say like your, my name is, of course, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 of yeah. course. Like uh, I need, because uh, I was in Turkey in January, yeah. so I needed like three, four days to get yeah. back to like uh, being able to communicate because yeah, 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 when you don't use the language for a long time the muscle memory, you start right? like um it's still sitting somewhere inside you just have to trigger the brain to start like thinking yeah. of in this language and for the first point you said like uh you have to reach this level of frustration to learn anything and i think that was like a uber uh uberman podcast mm -hmm. andrew uberman podcast and he showed the study a paper you know or you have to reach this level of frustration mm -hmm. to like uh, um a progress in the area yeah. so yeah definitely i think that that's the the things i think like it depends because um like I learned Swedish fastest and the most, like the best, because I was very interested in the language. I was very motivated to learn the language as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, so it kind of like, if, let's say, if you just want to learn a language for, um, just because you want to learn a language, like a hobby, um, then you might not feel, put like as much effort as you would do if you really like need the language and if you expose yourself to the language. So if you really want to learn the language, let's say Vietnamese, the right way to do it is to be in Vietnam yeah, and, talk to, and hang out with locals, Immersion. hang out with people that don't speak English because yeah. when you hang out with people that uh, can turn into a language that is easier for communication, you're not gonna get as much benefit. When you struggle, that's when you learn. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so that's how, like, um, that's how I learned Swedish really fast. And another tip that I can give is um, try to find associations in other languages. Like, for example, um, for me, Swedish was easy because um, some Swedish words are very similar to English with just different ending. Okay. So, for example. Um, accept in English is acceptera in Swedish or um, or like there are many similar languages uh, same similar words German roots right or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. so interesting so interesting um, I have to ask you like you, you say you study like in uh, engineering uh, engineering study right yeah. but you're a trader right now yeah so can you explain how did you became like a trader yeah sure so um, I always had passion for business and entrepreneurship, um, and I've always had this leadership personality. Um, so I studied engineering and biotechnology just because I was a really great student at school, and all my teachers were kind of like attacking me. Oh, you should go on a competition. We should prepare you for a competition. So they were pushing me into science way too much, like chemistry, biology, mathematics. 
Um, so that's how I was like more focusing on into the science world, like medical medicine related subjects, yeah. uh, even though I was interested in economics. Um, but I never studied economics, but I had the chance to see how a business is run by observing my father. He has been a businessman all his life. He has never worked a single day for someone else. So, uh, and I think that with economy, you don't really learn how to run a business in all these things at school. Exactly. You like, learn the good economics with you, your father. You, then. you learn by doing and by making mistakes because theory is completely different from practice. And um, uh, even before I started studying engineering in biotechnology, I took a few courses at university for uh, business and administration. And this was mainly like to get the basic knowledge about um, balance sheets, liquidity, like such kind of things, yeah. basic things that are related to accounting. And, um, and this was mainly because I was interested in it. It was not like, uh, oh, I'm planning to become an accountant or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I had the purpose already that I was going to study medicine first, <laughs> but I changed my mind. Um, and then I ended up studying biotechnology from day one. I could feel that this was not my thing, yeah. but I'm not a personality that would just like start with something and leave it. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I kept going. And um, the reason why I wasn't feeling fulfilled and, and uh, I didn't really feel that this is my thing, I kept looking for different alternatives to make money. Yeah. So um, that's, that's how I stopped upon trading. Um, I, I had trial and errors with other business ideas. So I tried to start other startups. Mm -hmm. Um, the first thing that uh, I did was I took a course for a performance coach. Uh, so I started a business for, um, as a performance coach, wow. mainly for females yeah. on how to take a leadership role, how not to be afraid to like, uh, stand out and not to have those limiting beliefs from, so from society. Uh, but I was, um, I was only 21 when, uh, I started this business. Uh, and it was, <laughs> it was an interesting experience because I wasn't familiar with how, like, uh, how to run a business, especially not in Sweden. Like they have so many rules and regulations that you have to follow. So I, I was way more optimistic and I was thinking, oh, I can make money from it. But when you count like all the taxes and all the things that are coming with it, it it's, I realized that this was really not worth my time, especially because people were also uh, judgmental, um, uh, like if someone would, I organize like a free webinar to be able to, uh, provide some value so that I can get clients, uh, and people would be like, oh, you're going to teach me how to take a leadership role. And I'm like, um, at you, 21. same age you, where, as yeah. your mom, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, uh, some of them were like impressed the, the ones that gave me a chance to actually share my knowledge and give some guidelines were impressed on how like 21 year old can think that way and can uh, um, and ha is so open-minded and has different observation on life but most of them were like oh like a kid is gonna teach me how to take a leadership role so yeah but it was a great experience i learned lots of things from it um, then i had another trial and errors and uh, that's how a friend of mine uh, said like, uh, you're, um, in, there is a misconception about trading. People think that you have to be really good at mathematics in order to be a trader, but that's not true. But a friend of mine who had, um, already started with trading, but like, it was like the beginning stages. He said like, why don't you try trading? You're, you're smart, you're good at mathematics. Uh, you grab things quickly and I didn't even know about trading by then. I, I thought that trading is something that only institutions do. I didn't think that a retail for like normal person like me and you can go online and trade. Yeah, right. uh, so when I got to know about that, I, w I got intrigued. So I told him like, can you please share with me uh, how, uh, how I can start? And he shared a, a few like PDF books, a few uh, videos from YouTube and that's how I started. And wow. from the beginning, I was like, oh, wow, this, I love it. Like from the beginning, I just knew that this is so interesting. This I is find so my cool. things. Yeah. That was it. So 
it was not even a one week in of me exploring and learning about trading. Yeah. I just knew, oh, I love it. Yeah. I, you have this I, I was so passionate about like uh, the whole idea. Yeah. That's, that's so amazing. And if I come back to the roots and as you said at the beginning, like w one important thing is I, I think like you said, you learn with your father, right? And he never, like, like he never, he never been in school even, uh, he, he never like uh, work for people even one day in his life. Yeah. And that's so cool. And you talk also about um, the school, right? You avoid, you miss that opportunity to uh, study economic, right? But I think that's a bless because like school is indoctrination and like learning by yourself is education. Yeah. I really think about that. Like school of course can bring you some cool things, yeah. but the way of thinking will be narrow by school. Yeah. So I think that's a bless and that play a role uh, to who you are today. Definitely. And like it seems to me, if you're successful right now, is because like your elevation was thanks to this mentor, mentoring, right? Yeah. How we do as uh, in every area, not only trading, but I think it, it work, it could work like on life. How me and everybody could find a good mentor? A few things that you should understand is what kind of person you are. Firstly, like first and foremost, because depends on the personality you have you will work better with a different personality type because not all mentors are good mentors not all mentors know how to uh, touch to a person like to the right points where they have to touch uh personally i was I, I don't think that there is a perfect way it's trying out it's by trying different people so i would um because personally, the reason why I took this course for a performance coach was because I was really intrigued by following different people and what kind of value I could get from different uh, ones. Mm -hmm. So I would follow a few and then if I lose the interest to follow them after a short amount of time, this means that this is not a good mentor for me. Yeah. Uh, but if someone really like grasps your attention yeah. and if you listen to a podcast from this mentor yeah. and you're like oh wow like i can like relate so much to everything that he's saying this is the person like listen to your intuition yeah the intuition will tell you and someone uh who i've been following that helped me in lots of different th uh, like uh, in many challenges in life to get out of the challenges and struggles that i've been to okay. is one swedish uh, uh, mental coach called johannes hansen so um, when I started listening to, um, I first started listening to his podcast. And then um, um, once I heard a few podcasts, I was like, oh my God, I can relate so much to everything that uh, he's mentioning. Okay. Uh, so I bought all his books. Like wow. he, had, <laughs> he had a package of, I think it was, it's like five, six books. Yeah. So I just ordered all the books. Like I was like, I want to study this person completely and I want to follow what he's uh, teaching and the guidelines that he's given. And it has definitely helped me so much in very difficult times. So I knew that w whenever I was struggling, I, would ju I know that the therapy for me is exercise, um, uh, good sleep, and then reading books or reading the guidelines from him and just following what he's saying. Wow, insane. Um, because a right mentor can, um, will kind of like make you aware of, we, uh, they will not like give you uh, promises that will make you to have an expectation hangover to, to say like, uh, oh, don't worry, you're going to be fine in one week if you do X, Y, Z. They would say, hey, give yourself time. Uh, those are the things that you can try. There's no guarantee that they are going to work, but like they kind of like they're trying to open your mind and they're trying to challenge you. So um, the reason why I like this mentor so much is because he would first show some form of empathy and then he would cut you like, no excuses, do this, like, oh. and challenge you. Yeah. Um, but it, of course it took some time for me to find a good balance uh, by following his guidance because I went from like, no excuses, no excuses to like, you become disciplined and which is great. Like if you have self-discipline, this is l l the best thing you can have, the best skill you can have in life. Cause mm -hmm. with discipline, you can achieve anything you want. No matter if it's like a good body, like fit body, no, no matter if it's learning the language or climbing in your career, corporate path or whatever you want. If you have discipline to stick to your plan, 
you're gonna achieve anything you want in life. So I train my discipline, but something that I say, I also have a community of people that I'm uh, teaching uh, trading. So I, yeah. I say to them, the line between self-sabotage and discipline is very thin. Yeah. And I realized that after burnouts and after like trial and error. And then when I went back to read the books again, because I'm rereading many books uh, over and over again, I'm not oh. like the type of person that would just read the book and leave it there. Okay. Like uh, I always go back because yeah. I know that like with the experiences that we have in life, yeah. we start re like getting different perspectives and we would perceive mm -hmm. one information in a different way the second time we read it and the third time we read it. Yeah. So. I, I like. And I have a few favorite books for personal development that I love, and I re, I go back to them like uh, wow. every six seven months. Crazy! I love it. Uh, just like, for example, me with the book because you say like you just come back to them. Uh, I know that's the 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 book I love. I take notes, uh -huh. not every books, and especially right now with the Kindle. But I take notes in the book. You know, I I put these notes on the side, and then I put those notes on a Google Doc uh -huh. and then I put the Google Doc in uh, audio okay. and I listening my own notes. That's all okay. good. Yeah, and that's the tips I use for the book I want to, you know, uh -huh. instead of come back on those books, I, I, I could like just listen the audio everywhere. Uh, like doesn't matter where I am. Yeah, right? yeah. But can I ask you like, what is your top three books? Like overall, it could be like self-improvement, it could be finance, it could be life. Yeah, Tips, um, like. top three books, uh, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself yeah. from Jordan Spencer. Yeah. Um, Master Your Emotions. I can't remember the name of the author, but uh, this book. And then the third one would be Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you think for someone who uh, going to start a business or trading, do you think like set a goal, uh, I mean a number, a number of figures like I try to achieve 10k a month do you think like have this number as a goal is important um, I would say trading is completely different from business okay so um, what do you think in, in for trading I for mean trader? it's it's different but same I can explain okay <laughs> let's do it um, so let's say if you're running a business it's good to have like a number um, because this will like motivate you to push yourself harder to achieve what you have set as a target. And another good thing for that is manifestation. Yeah. I do believe in manifestation. Yeah. And uh, when you have set this number, I feel like you send information to the universe to give you the opportunities in order to reach this certain number. But with trading, because trading is 80% psychology and 20% technical analysis, which people are maybe not aware of, you might put too much pressure on yourself and with that underperform. So let's say I've done that, I've done the mistake, that's why I know that, that it's not a good thing to do. So for example, if I set a certain number that I want to, let, let's say, make uh, a certain amount of, uh, per every month or weekly target, um, I would make money and then I would be like very little away from the target, let's say, and then I would force it and I would lose half of it or everything just forcing myself to reach the target so it plays a lot with the psychology yeah uh, that's why and like with trading you don't have um, good conditions and opportunities to yeah. trade every single day so that's why it's not really a good thing to set the target um and um, yeah. in a difference from business for example yeah. of course the, things are uncertain with business as well like you might not have the best month to sell your products that you're selling or services and things like that but it's uh, it's not like um, that you're taking a decision at the moment and with trading the dangerous part is that these kind of thoughts can trigger you to make an impulsive decision and you might place an order, like open a position in the market in a matter of seconds, just by one click and lose money. So that's the dangerous part in setting goals as a trader. But with business, I definitely, um, I definitely think that you should set like a number. It doesn't have to be like a specific number, but like, let's say I would like to achieve five figures, six figures uh, until this date or like something like that. It doesn't have to be specific, specific in my opinion. 
it, it could be uh, harsh questions, but can you can you uh, can you tell us to us like how much do you make as a trader every month? Um, like some months I don't make a penny, some months I make a lot. So it's um, in average. And the thing is, like with with trading, you can scale. It, yeah. Like um, so, I've been trading now for four years, yeah. and uh, the first three years I didn't make a penny. Like I was losing instead of making money. The wow. first year I was losing. The second year was a break-even year. So I would like make some money, then I would lose them. I would make again, I would lose them. And then from the third year, yeah. um, the, I would say like the third year was quite uh, turbulent because of some private things that like personal issues. Yeah. So it started well, I started making money and then I had to take a break from trading because of some personal things and then I came back and when I came back, it was like, I already knew what I had to do and I already had the skill, but I had some emotional damages that I had, that I had to work on in, in order to overcome them to be able to start making money. And then, um, um, actually this was the second year, the, like from middle of the second year to the third year. And then everything started like going upwards from beginning of 2023. Okay. Um, so I can say like last year I've made, uh, six figures from trading. Yeah. Um, this year, like in average, I can say that I'm making, uh, I, I'm not making five figures a month, but in average I make, I'm always like, uh, four figures. It's yeah, never below. Always four figures yeah. a month. That's huge. Huge. Like, I mean, in four years is beautiful. Like, like I would say. Um, I have much higher targets and I know that I can achieve much more. Yeah. So currently I'm focused on increasing the capital because I know that this is a numbers game. So if I manage more capital with the same skill and the same trading, the same trades that I'm taking, I can make more money. So for example, if I have under management half million dollars, 1% on this half million is $5,000. But if I have more capital in like, let's say a million, three millions, five millions, this 1% is much more. So that's why my focus now is not to make a lot of money, but to get more capital so that I can profit from the same, like the compounding effect very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing. You're Thank welcome. you very much for sharing. <laughs> you know, uh, us, like personally me as a newbie, I imagine a trader with the hood on the, on the head and staying 16 hours be, be behind the computer and looking those charts and, and eating this fast food, you know, and mm -hmm. do you value like exercise, uh, meditation, like, or things to control emotions and, uh, nutrition? Like, is it important things for you? And do you think like most of traders like in, uh, neglect these things? Uh, um, so uh, would, exercise and nutrition. Yeah, it's very important. It's very important, especially because as I mentioned, it's a mind game. So in order for you to be focused, to have mental clarity, you have to feel good. And in order to feel good, you're not going to feel good if you eat junk food every single day and you don't move your ass. <laughs> like <laughs> you have to have some form of physical activity. You have to get good sleep. You have to take care of your body in order to feel good, in order to be able to perform well. There are some unique cases where people are like, we know the Wall Street guys that are quite <laughs> uh, big, but there is another study related to that. And I can mention about it as well, how stress is related to like um, uh, to obesity. Yeah. Um, but for example, like, uh, as a retail trader, most of the successful traders that I've uh, spoken to, and, I, uh, and since I was working for one of the top firms in the world that is giving capital to traders, I've interviewed more than 150 successful, very successful traders that have been making like uh, six, seven figures uh, from, from these firms. So uh, almost all of them, like more than 90% of them are really focused on exercise, eating healthy, uh, having a like a healthy lifestyle and uh, taking care of like what they're how they're what they how they feed their brain and not just like feeding their brain by food but also with the information because that's important. The ten other person just do cocaine, sex, and party drugs everywhere. Uh, <laughs> there are people like the reason why I said ninety percent above ninety percent is there is like ten percent yeah. that are taking different psychedelics, which is. It, it's not co cocaine, like uh, it can be marijuana, it can be like mushrooms and such kind of things. 
Yeah, so uh, there are some people that um, that are falling into this category. Yeah. Uh, but not many. Like the 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 top performers are not between those ten percent. The top performers are the disciplined ones that are. Um, you don't have to be like lifting weights or anything like that, but they have some form of physical activity. Yeah. Uh, most of them are um, quite uh, heavy on meditation and mindfulness. Um, so yeah, it's it's a very important thing if you want to be a successful trader, in my opinion. Like there are unique cases like in every single field yeah. where some people are ego driven, but still performing, but uh, there are not many like, um, there, there are not many that are unique that can just do whatever they want and live this unhealthy lifestyle and then uh, like perform. On the long term, it's not, it's it's, not viable, no, right? No, definitely yeah. not. And like when it comes to, um, I know that when we mention about trading, m many people would think of uh, some Wall Street uh, big guys <laughs> and that are drinking like crazy in the bars and paying strippers like, there, yeah, there is that part, but... Um, Only Wood's pushing that. Yeah, yeah, you know, so, so they, they are they're... such kind of people that would go in, into this strip club, spend money, but they don't do it every day. They do it after they make like a really huge uh, achievement. Um, trading is very stressful. And uh, if you don't do all these things, if they don't have time, I would say like, I think that some of them struggle with obesity because uh, it's very stressful and even if you don't eat a lot, um, the cortisol levels make that you uh, store fat in your abdomen. Uh, so some people that are into trading and struggle with obesity might struggle because of the stress levels. Yeah. And there is also the issue like now we going to sleep with the cortisol level high. Yeah. And normally you have to wake up with the high level of cortisol and sleeping with the melatonin, right? Yeah. I know it's kind of reverse because we use this blue light before sleeping, right? Yeah. So yeah. maybe they're all uh, chemicals or, you know, the uh, disrupts. Yeah. And uh, sort of. And of course, what you feel your body with the, the good, if you feel your body with the good things, you will feed your mind. Then like everything is connected. So yeah. I can relate to that. Yeah. And how do you manage to stress your, to manage your stress? Because this, you say like it's 80% like emotional and stress and involved in it. Like do you have a special tips to, do you learn on your journey some uh, tips to control your emotion or I don't know, like yeah. go away, like put your mind away or be detached from the outcome or, you Yeah, know. yeah. Uh, it's, it's all like uh, quite a long process. So I've been working with myself a lot. Um, and um, depending on the life situation, like currently I'm in the best state that I've been from the beginning of my, of my journey until now. <laughs> Thank you. So um, I went through a lot of things and it has been like learning by trial and error. Um, at the beginning, like um, after the personal things that happened that I mentioned, uh, I had this uh, thought process of thinking that, oh, I missed out on a lot by taking a break. So I would, was putting way too much pressure on myself to make up for the period when I wasn't as active. And um, this led to success. Like it's not, not uh, I wasn't like, performing the best on the charts, but it led to other type of success in terms of like uh, um, uh, starting to work with one of the best firms in the world that is giving capital to traders, networking with the best performers in the industry. Um, and by connecting with them, I learned so many things. By talking to them, I came to lots of different re realizations that led me to um, the path that I took of like, uh, even deeper self-discovery. I was self-aware even before that. Yeah. And I was working with um, uh, the books from the mental coach that I mentioned even before I started working with um, uh, these companies and before I started with trading. But once I started talking to these people, though, like it was a trader who said to me, hey, read Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. This helped me a lot. Another trader, read Atomic Habits. This helped me a lot. Like. Uh, so when I started reading these books and implementing everything that I was learning from the books, that's when lots of things started changing. And, um, and like after, I would say like, after having like a quite a long period of putting a lot of pressure on myself 
and I came to a point of almost, it, I, it was a burnout, even though I didn't want to admit that it was a burnout, it was a burnout. So I had all signs of burnout and uh, I was aware that I need help. I reached out to a psychologist and um, when I started talking to my psychologist, she was the one that was kind of like giving me tasks to, uh, my problem was mainly um, feeling guilty if I'm resting. Like that, I, I was feeling anxious and guilty if I was resting. So I was all the time on the go. Like my schedule was completely full uh, all day long. I, I didn't have like a meal, uh, just a meal to enjoy. I was all the time with the laptop, with a notebook, with things, to, with to-do list that I have to finish and things like that. So I was really like struggling with that. And I knew that this is not something that will help me to perform well. I became a great analyst, but I was making stupid mistakes by not being emotionally stable. So people could see that, um, like, and I was aware that my analysis was on point because I had put so much hours and uh, so much training and collecting data about my strategy that I'm using. And I knew that it was like very accurate, um, but the mental instability was making me to uh, cut my profits earlier or um, like, uh, putting stop loss to break even, which is like uh, putting like a risk free trade too early because of the fear of losing money because I wanted to like make more. So, such kind of things, um, when you're in a position, you are uncomfortable because you don't know the, un uh, the outcome. And as human beings, we're driven by fear. So, if you fear of losing or if you fear of um, uh, leaving profits on the table uh, and becoming like too greedy, this can really like uh, mess you up and mess your performance if you're not aware of the thoughts that are coming to your head and aware what is like rational and what is emotional. Yeah. Um, so yeah, once I started digging deeper into like reading and following the instructions from my psychologist, um, things started getting a little bit better, but it was a long process. I think that many people go wrong by trying something for a short time and giving up. Um, something that I did was I was sticking to the things that, um, that I was reading about and the things that I was hearing from my psychologist, no matter, and I was like, no matter how long time it's going to take me, I'll make it, I'll do it. Like I'll get rid of this anxiety. I'll get rid of this guilt. Um, so I was like really willing to put in the effort and do whatever is necessary to get rid of this feeling because it's not good at all to be all the time under anxiety and pressure. Uh, I was getting an anxiety attacks. Like I would be in the gym and I would get an anxiety attack and burst crying in the gym like while I'm running. Like, <laughs> um, and it was not cool. Um, yes, I achieved a lot, but it was very pre like with a lot of pressure, you know, like in a short amount of time. So something that I decided to do um, was uh, to completely change my environment and listen to my intuition. So instead of like listening to what other people are telling to me and follow what others have done to overcome different struggles, I was like, why am I listening to all these people? Why just I don't like think of like what my body needs and what I need as a person. So in my journal, I went because I'm journaling quite often. And I went back and I started reading uh, like uh, months and weeks before like what I've been writing. So something that I, I had like uh, an aha moment of me writing, I know that this is not good for me, but I keep doing it. I know that this person is not good for me, but I keep stand, like being next to them and like letting them mess up with me. Like, so I've been like constantly writing those things in thinking that I can manage not to let them affect me, but it was like, there was no result. So I was like, okay, in order for me to actually be able to get to the next level where I want to be, I just have to let things go. And it's hard sometimes to let things go, especially like when you are, when you have some strong bond with the things that you have been doing. Um, but I was just thinking like, what is most important for me is, uh, to achieve some form of peace and like find inner peace and harmony. So like at the beginning of 2023, my goals were 
I want this much in funding. I want this much percentage in like return. Uh, I want to achieve this and that, like thousands of like achieve, 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 perform, perform, perform. Like my vision board was screaming off like, you have to fucking work all day, every single day if you want to achieve this. At the beginning of 2024, my intentions were completely different because I understood that I'm like, uh, why do I actually have to achieve all, all that in such a short amount of time? What am I chasing? Like, what's the purpose in life? Why, why do I do all of these things? So I started asking myself much deeper questions and I started digging deeper inside of me and like to, um, to find the true alignment with my true self. Uh, so once I started asking and answering those deep questions, who am I? Who I, like, uh, what is my purpose in life? What are the things that are making me happy? That's when I decided, okay, I'm doing things most probably to prove others that I'm good enough. And those are things that might be coming from childhood. Those are things that might be coming from lots of different like areas in our lives. And I'm like, uh, like I had to make this mental switch and really and have the realization that I'm good enough as I am without achieving anything. And that's when things started like changing. And um, I removed those uh, things that were affecting me negatively. I, d I knew that Sweden was not the place that was affecting my mental health in a good way. So I was like, uh, I took the decision of like, I canceled my apartment by, while listening to a podcast that was saying, listen to your intuition. I'm like, okay, if, wish I, if I should listen to my intuition, I shouldn't be here. So I just took my phone and I wrote an email to the Land Road, I'm canceling my apartment. <laughs> and then I went to visit my parents and I, I told them like, uh, I'm moving from Sweden. I have no idea where I'm gonna go. I don't know, but my intuition was telling me, you, you should not be there if you wanna go to the next level that you wanna achieve. So that's how I kind of like ended up here and started this yeah. digital nomad life, which led to like lots of uh, inner work. Cause you know that the best way to work on spirituality and inner work is definitely here. Um, and something that was very impactful uh, was when I was in Malaysia, I met uh, many traders um, and one of them who is a really high performer, uh, had had a very big loss that affected him really bad. Uh, he was depressed and, uh, and I asked him like, how did you overcome like such kind of stress and struggle? And it's normal for anyone to feel depressed after losing, I think he lost like $100,000 in, in a matter of a few weeks. Um, and it was like from money from private investors, uh, which is even like worse. Um, so, <laughs> So he told me that um, he went to different healings and therapies and I asked him, can you introduce me to your healer, to the person that was uh, guiding you? So I went to the therapist together with him. Um, to, uh, the name of the woman was Jo the, in, in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And uh, the, ther like, the sessions that we had there were like life changing. Like, just one meditation can change so much for you. It might not be like, you might be trying and trying and trying and you might not feel anything. Cause I've been trying to meditate even before, uh, many times. I wasn't really good at focusing like, but I was keep trying and trying, even though I wasn't like, you feel good 15, 20 minutes, one hour after the meditation. And then I would go back to the per previous state. But after this meditation that I had in Malaysia, it was like a whole purification. Like uh, I started crying during the meditation while breathing deeply and, uh, um, but this was like a moment when I connected with my inner child and I feel that that was the moment when I decided, okay, now I'm gonna align with my true self. And, I'm, and when I went back to the apartment where I was staying, I just started deleting things from my schedule and uh, I told everyone, I might be weird, but I'm gonna do what is gonna make me happy. And since then, I got rid of the anxiety, uh, which I'm really happy for. Like I, I've, I've been like more than one month without feeling any kind of anxiety. 
Um, and I finally feel this inner peace without performing and delivering everything and like on time and, and such kind of things. So it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey and um, like to people that are struggling with anxiety and stress and um, I would tell them like, keep going, keep trying, because you don't know what will help and you don't know which moment will help. Because yeah. if I gave up, like I've been trying meditation for years and nothing really worked. But this one therapy that I went to, it was like, just like, oh, this is, now I know. Now I know how to find this inner peace, how to find this connection. And it came through, now I know that for me, what works the most is visualization while I'm meditating um, and connecting to my inner child. That's what works the most for me to be at peace and to be happy. That's huge. Thanks for sharing. That's so huge. You're welcome. And you know, one good thing with you, Anna, is like, I think you and everybody should be the same, and especially during the twenties is like, keep, keep experimenting everything. Like you've been like hardworking, like 24 or 16 hours a day or something. Yeah. And you know, and, and you feel this sensation, this feeling of burnout. And then like you, you've been conscious about that. Yeah. And then you drop everything and being on some magic uh yeah, like uh, uh connecting to your inner child in Kuala Lumpur and yeah. I don't know you guys but me I, I really want to know what what was the process during this like kind of you know therapy yeah but uh, how do you connecting with your inner child in briefly like do you do you breathe do you move do you sing do you dance like do you play music do you how can you like feel better if you're overstressed yeah I think that everyone is different I went to lots of other different therapies in Bali and uh, I see that everyone is having their own way. Yeah. But for me personally, like what worked for me the best was it was an art therapy. Uh, the art one therapy. That, that was like, um, that was the aha moment for me. Drawing. It was, yeah, it was drawing. Wow. So okay. the whole therapy consisted of first, it was uh, some sound healing and stretching. Yeah. And, uh, and then we had visualized meditation, which was to connect with our inner child. Okay. So I can mention like uh, a few things that, uh, that this visualizations consisted of and how it all, like uh, what it all led to. Yeah. Um, so first, um, first the therapist told us to like visualize ourselves in a place where we felt uh, peacefully and freely as a child okay um and interesting enough like the place that first came to my mind was not my uh room as a kid it was not my parents home it was not a place where i was quite often it was my grandma's garden where i used to spend three days a year like okay that was the place that i that first came to my mind when she said like visualize yourself in the place where you felt more most at peace and most joyful as a kid yeah so, and the reason, like after, work, after the visualization, I reflected on all these things and I know why this place came to my mind. Uh, but during the visualization, I was just focused to follow what she was telling to me. So she said first, like visualize yourself at the place where you f felt most joy and happiness as a kid and where, where, where you felt completely free. And I was like, after the reflection, I was like, yeah, my parents were not there. My grandma was nothing me to do whatever I wanted to do. Freedom. Of course, I was pretty happy, the most, pretty, mo most happy when I was there. Like, it was pure freedom. Yeah. Um, and I was playing with whatever I wanted to play. So, like, for me, it was not weird that the thing that came to my mind was exactly that place. Um, so, afterwards, she said, like, um, she gave us some time to, to, get back to the memories of us playing um, at this place. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and afterwards she said, imagine yourself now, like you today, coming closer to this little kid that is playing there. Uh, and this was the moment that kind of like, I realized, oh my God, the gap between my inner child and me today is insanely huge. So, um, I was shifting the perspective during the visualization between like the, the kid, Anna as a kid and Anna as an adult. Yeah. So 
when I was from this end of point, like from the point of view of my me as a kid, looking at this anxious, overstressed Anna today, mm. I was like, "What the hell are you doing to yourself?" Like, uh, and she told us, um, "Imagine yourself sitting next to your uh, you as a kid." So I imagined myself, me as a kid and me as an adult sitting next to each other and having a conversation with each other. So I would put myself in the, in the child's perspective and I would tell to the adult what I want her to do, to be peaceful and to, to feel good. And then I would put myself into the adult person and, and show compassion to the little kid and uh, give like opinion and advices to the little kid. Mm. So that's how I started like connecting myself with my inner self, wow. with my true self. Yeah. And that's when I came to this like realization that I'm actually doing things that are hurting my, that are not aligning with the inner kid yeah. that I really am. Okay. Um, and after the whole meditation and visual visualization, then there, uh, there was when the arts came. So she gave us, we were 10 people in the group and she gave us a blank paper with, uh, uh, with uh, pencils to like paint, yeah. uh, not pencils, I don't know exactly the word of this uh, pastel. Is it like water paints? It, it's not water, it's the ones that are like pastel, quite ah, like yeah. fatty. I don't know the name. I don't but know the name, but I, I, uh, you know which ones I, I mean. I know what you put down, yeah. yeah. So she gave us such ones and she, start, she said, uh, okay, start drawing what you visualized oh, okay. on, the, on the paper. And that was a garden. And, uh, and I started like drawing and I started like drawing the grass. I started drawing the blue sky that I imagined. Yeah. Um, and she said, stop. Oh. When I like after not even a minute, yeah. like she said, stop. And she said, give your painting to the next person. Oh, okay. So. We started rotating and she said like, draw whatever you, your intuition is telling you to, to draw. It, it can be something that you visualize. It can be something that out of nowhere, like just like a cloud or a sun or a rainbow, anything. So, so she just said, express yourself through art. Just r draw whatever you feel like drawing. Yeah. So um, this was very like the reason why I say it's very different for every single person is because we were 10 people in the room and we all responded differently to this guidance. So some people would just stand and not draw a single thing. Some people would show and express every like draw lots of things. Some people would draw on some paintings and on some not. And we were just rotating the paintings. Uh, and we didn't know which drawing we have, like wh whose person it would, yeah. So at the end, like after like a whole circle, uh, she said, okay, so now the next painting that you're gonna receive will be your own painting. So I, I received, I had to actually bring it because I have it. <laughs> oh my God, this is amazing. Uh, you will show me later. I, I right? will show you right, yeah. later, okay. yeah. So um, we received our paintings and the funny thing, like I, I saw my paintings and it was completely different from what, what I had like imagined. Uh, but I could find like lo a lot of correlation to the things that I have been envisioning in yeah. my painting. Okay. So something that was interesting that I compared to all the other paintings in the group, uh, from all 10 paintings, my painting was the only painting without white on the paper. It was full of color. Oh yeah. Okay. So people have been like painting like crazy on, yeah, <laughs> on yours, on mine, without knowing my story, without knowing me, without anything. Yeah. So she was. She asked me like, "What was the first thing that came to your mind when you saw your painting?" And I was like, "This is my life. <laughs> no empty space. This is my schedule. Oh, like, yeah. uh, <laughs> no breathing room at all." And I started laughing when I like. This was the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah. Uh, something else that was interesting, someone wrote, don't give up on, on the painting. Uh, and I, I was like, this is really interesting that someone just got the intuition to write on my painting, yeah. don't give up. Yeah. So she said, she asked me like, what do you think about that? And I said, um, maybe I should not give up on the goals that I've set for myself. Um, I should like keep pursuing my dreams and like achieving the things that I, I have in my mind. Um, and another thing that I mentioned is, uh, 
that I feel that I'm a part, I have a lot of abundance in my life. I, I'm never scared of scarcity. I've always had like so many opportunities and I think it's very important. If you want to have opportunities, it's very important to have the abundance mindset. Mm. To feel that something will come, like just desire, send the desire in the universe and, and something that you don't expect, the least expect will happen that will give you the opportunity that you desire. So I told her like, I feel that this is also showing me that uh, my life is full of abundance. Uh, but with the don't give up part, she was like, okay, so uh, your focus is still on the goals that you have to achieve. And she said, what about yourself? And I'm like, and this was the aha for me. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, don't give up on yourself. Yeah. That's what I'm forgetting. And I've been forgetting all the time. So this was the moment which was like shipped for me. Um, and there were other things on the painting that I related to. Uh, another funny thing was someone just draw like uh, something that for me seemed like a male waiting on a bench <laughs> and I've been single for the rest of like all my life. <laughs> um, I've never like really had a relationship in, in I've never felt that I've met the person uh, that will be my future partner. Yeah. Uh, so I started laughing and I said, it's obviously someone that is waiting for me somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there were a few things on the painting that were like really interesting for me to analyze and to see the perspective, how I see on the things. Yeah. Cause I believe that if you see the painting, it will be like, ah, uh, what's that? Like, well, you know? what's that? Yeah. What that thing is. But, much. but for me, since I went through all this visualization yeah. and I know what I've been manifesting, I know what kind of goals I've been setting. I kind of, kind of like found all these things in the painting, even though it was not a painting that I draw myself, it was a group painting. Well, okay. We yeah. talk about mental heals and we talk about helping, uh, you know, and you love to, I lo we talk each other and you love to impact yeah. those around yourself. And, you know, there is this, uh, like, Confucius, I think that was Confucius famously said, like, choose a work that you love and you will never work one day in your life. So my question is like, do you think people should go for the dream job, for the patient job or, or like uh, it's better to choose a job will bring you like resources to take care of your family, even if you don't like this job, like it will bring you money or so my question is like, should we go for the patient and the dream job or should we go for the resources one? I think we should go for the passion. And the reason why I think that is because and like there are different perspectives here because not all people are people that would like to put themselves in uh, out of your, their comfort zone. Not all people are willing to take risks. Not all people are, um, are willing to sacrifice things in life. So I don't even think that such kind of people would find this conversation interesting. Yeah. Uh, but for people that find this conversation interesting, I think that they should go for the passion. And the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, you can find a way to monetize your passion. If you like, and when you do something that you truly love, you're gonna make it, people will feel it. And, and you're gonna find success with it earlier or, or later. You might have to sacrifice of not making enough money at the beginning or, or a few years, yeah. but there will be a moment when things will switch and will change. Uh, so that's why I encourage everyone to go for the passion because what's the meaning of life? It's not to be miserable and work for uh, someone else to, just for a paycheck. Mm. Like if that doesn't make you happy, yeah. like what's the point? Yeah. But if you go for a passion and for something that you love, you will, even if you don't achieve the numbers that you achieve, you're going to have this peace, you're going to have this happiness. You're going to have this, and that's m the most important for, uh, thing for according to me, uh, at least. Because I know many wealthy people that are not happy. And I don't think that, and, I, and life is short. So what's the point of living an unhappy, like, miserable life with lots of material things if you don't feel this inner peace and joy? Um, for me, it's much more important to feel this harmony and happiness. Um, and the only way to achieve it is through doing things that you're passionate about. So if, let's say, um, for me, I was like, uh, I would say trading is something that can 
can bring a lot of money and I know many people that get, get into trading because of the money side of things. Yeah. And most of these people would just make some money trading. They would not be high performers or, or it won't be long lasting. They would make some money there and then they would invest into the thing that they are passionate about. That's also an alternative. Like you can, if, um, don't be afraid to be creative and to think about alternatives. So let's say if you are, if you love dancing and uh, you think, oh, how am I going to monetize? Like, how am I going to get paid by dancing? There will be a way. Like, if you're really, mm -hmm. truly passionate about dancing, mm -hmm. go for it, love it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then think for alternatives. What can I do to be able to monetize my skill? Now, with all these opportunities online, you can make money from whatever you want. So you can uh, create a dancing course. You can create events that will bring people like together that are passionate about dancing. Uh, you can organize events that you're gonna feel passionate about. Like there are so many different things that you can do to monetize your passion. And when you do something with passion, you can improve and you can really provide value and quality. And that's when you make money. You make money when you provide value and quality to yeah. people. Yeah. You don't make money by just doing things. Because yeah. you might get lucky to make some money by doing things that uh, you are not really passionate about, but this is one belong last thing. Well, if you do something that you truly love and you're passionate about, you might not see money in the beginning, but this will like the reward will come later just from the love that you give to the things that you're doing. I relate to so much on what you said. And there is these things like when you follow the traditional path, like there is like competition, right? Yeah. And uh, there is also another path in is uh, the path of creation, the path of creation. Yeah. So instead of going to the competition, mainly you're going to the creation. And it could be like you say, like dancing, singing, and we live in the best period in this like human history to do those creativity work yeah to ourselves. express to express our creativity yeah to express our creativity and that's uh, yeah i'm so grateful for that yeah and i have to ask you like uh trading bring you a lot of money and what's the things to bring you the uh, more the you know what is the things that bring you the most joy in life uh for me the things that bring me joy and the things that i love doing are trading and dancing Trading, oh, you're dancing as Trading well. and dancing. Those are the things that I love. Yeah. Like, I love music. Uh, I love dancing. And I, I love expressing emotions through music. Yeah. Uh, and the way how I express my emotions through music is through dance. Yeah. Um, so, um, trading, for example, I'm really passionate about trading and I love it. So, I, for me, when people say, like, how can you spend so time? Now I'm not spending that much time on the charts analyzing. But... Even at the beginning when I wasn't seeing any profits, when I was just losing and losing and losing and I was getting hurt and I was having these sleepless nights um, because like the amount that I've lost at the beginning and I sacrificed is quite a huge amount compared to what I was making for a month. Um, so knowing all these things and knowing how hard it is and knowing that the statistics are and all the odds are against me were definitely not a help, but the belief in myself and the passion that I had for trading made me like move forward and like still love it. And the reason, like, as I said, it's a very stressful thing, but I was really passionate and interested about the whole idea of being able to actually analyze and understand how different events can impact the value of a currency. And, and for me, it's just, it's very interesting to the whole analytics part in it, in the depth in psychology behind trading. So, that's what makes like that's why I love trading. It's not something that I do for money. It's it's something that I truly love, and that's why I believe that I will be one of the best traders out there. And it's a matter of time. It's so cool <laughs> to hear someone passionate about what they do, what she does, and yeah, obviously you're a woman, and yeah. uh, that's so. I think that's so insane. Like, and I never saw a woman like like you. I mean, like as a trader, top tier trader for me, like as a woman. Do you have like a, there is like a figure, like, do you have like um, a mentor or someone above you as a woman trader? Someone with you, who you can share your, your, where you are, you know, in terms of level, in terms of goals, yeah. in terms of, you know, there is any woman like above you in a game or? Uh, I don't have, <laughs> so, yeah. I don't have. And for me, it's like that. Um, 
I've had mentors at the beginning of my journey just to understand like how things work, learn different strategies, like someone to give me some form of guidelines. I didn't get as much value from the mentors as I got from the interviews and by talking to successful people and yeah. them sharing their stories with me. Yeah. I got much more insights from them than what I got from the mentors. Okay. Um, and then another thing is like, I'm a very self-aware person yeah. and I'm not a person who would just accept what someone else would tell to me. I always have criticism in my thinking mm. and uh, in, in the information that I'm consuming. So let's say if a mentor is telling me do this, but I don't feel that this is the right thing for me, I'm not going to just follow what they're going to tell to me. I would follow for at the beginning because I never say I'm right. Like, uh, I don't think that this is right for me, but I'm willing to try. Yeah. That's my approach. Yeah. Um, so when they tell me, like when some of the mentors would tell me, you should do this, I just followed what they said, because they're mentors, they showed some success, they, they have had success, they have been through the path, so let me just follow what they say. But if you truly want to be great at something, you should find your own way of doing things. That's what I believe. And um, as I said, like I would follow the instructions for a short amount of time, and then I would listen to my intuition. Is it the right thing for you? Is it, and how would you know if it's the right thing for you? If it's going smoothly and easily and, and you, you love doing it, it's right. If you feel that I don't really enjoy it, it's not right. Like it's very simple yeah. uh, to understand if something is right for you or not. So uh, once I started getting insights from all the traders that I've spoken to, I realized that we are the creators. I realized that our mind is so powerful yeah and we don't need someone up above us to tell us what to do in order for us to achieve yeah i have always said imagination is the limit even before i started with trading for me this has been my code since i know about myself yeah um and i do like for me i don't think that there is an idol. I believe that I'm the best, even though it might so sound very, no, it, I might, I, it might sound very um, selfish and arrogant. Yeah. I think that I'm the best in what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm not trying to compare myself with someone else. I'm not trying to compare myself and achieve things that other people have achieved. I believe that I'm unique and I believe that I'm the best at what I do and, and I will keep being myself. That's so good to have this mindset. Like yeah. If you're the best at what you're doing or if you express that, you're going to be in high demand and you're going to make money. Yeah. So yeah. that's so cool. If you could change something right now in your life, what it will be? Nothing. I, I, I already it. know you, you're going to say that, but <laughs> please think, th uh, think twice because maybe there's something like you can change about everything. like. To be honest, I think that everything happens for a reason. So that's why I wouldn't change a single thing in my life. No, I don't say change. It, it, yeah. If you could, like, right now I give you like this, you know, magic things and you can like change something like maybe, I don't know, have 26 hours in a day or, you know, what it will be like. Believe me, I don't desire to change anything. Okay. That's beautiful. That's I don't desire to change anything in like, um, before I had the mindset of, oh, I wish, I wish, I wish I could change this. I wish I could change that. Yeah. Now I'm like, instead of thinking of, because when you have, I wish I can do something, I wish I can change something, you operate from a scarcity mindset. Like uh, this, like when you wish for something, this means that you lock the thing that you wish for. And when you operate from a scarcity mindset, it's, um, I don't think that things will just come to you, the things that you manifest. That's why I don't wish to change anything. And I just... Um, so you don't have demons anymore? Sorry? You don't have demons anymore? No. Like, and vices? Like, of course, I'm, I'm having up and ups and downs in life. I have challenges. I have losing days uh, when and I have losing streaks and I have lots of, like, things will, we should not expect from life that things are gonna just run smoothly and we're not gonna have problems and obstacles. But the way I approach problems and obstacles now is different from how I used to approach obstacles and problems before. So for example, if something would happen before, I would stress over it. I would be like, oh damn, like, why is this happening to me? Uh, and now, I, once I learned that I have to just shift it 
this is happening for me, not uh, like for me to learn something from it and for me to get m mentally stronger. Um, that when I made this shift, this helped me to handle the, to be more detached from the problem emotionally and take rational decisions that lead to faster problem solving. Yeah. If, if, if I give you like this crystal bulb and you can like have any answer in the world, like what will be your question? So why, why do people want to operate from uh, like wise power so important for people? Because I think that if people don't aim for this power, we're going to live in a much peaceful, like in peace. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's a good one though. I think it's an inner system. It's, it's, it's definitely an inner, inner system, but like if, is there a way to remove power, like this desire for power? And that would be my question. So you say like you uh, interviewed more than 115 successful, uh, 50 yeah. successful people. Yeah. Uh, like I know you are, uh, maybe we can uh, find it in your social media. I know that you have a YouTube channel, yeah. you have an Instagram. Uh, w where people uh, can find you, you know, yeah. like it's more LinkedIn. They can reach you on Instagram. Should they like, uh, of course, guys, I will link the Anna YouTube channel and uh, Hannah Instagram if she's OK with that, if she's yeah. agreed. And uh, wh what's the way people can reach you or maybe find those interviews, maybe if it's possible? Yeah, so uh, the name of my channel is Anna Skender. I can send you the link so that you can put it in the description. Yeah, I will leave it for sure. Uh, my Instagram for trading is Anna Forex Trades, uh, number four X Trades. Yeah. Um, and I have a personal account, uh, which is like more private. Um, and then uh, I'm not really a social media person, but um, I do love to respond to people that are writing about meaningful things. So I would ignore questions like, uh, hey, how are you? But if you ask me something, for, uh, ask for guidelines, I'm more than happy to respond. Um, and yeah, so my YouTube channel is that one. Um, my Instagram is uh, Anna uh, Forex Trades. And if you want to watch the interviews that I've done, um, you can head over to the Funded Trader uh, on YouTube and uh, you can find the whole playlist with all the recorded podcasts that I've done with That's on interviews. your channel, sorry. No, 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 it's uh, it's on uh, on the company like on the channel of the company ah, that okay. I worked for. Yeah, you will give me the link and we can leave it in the yeah, yeah. description as well. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much Anna for this talk. That was insane. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you as well. It was uh, a great opportunity. It, it was a pleasure to yeah. to share all, all these things with you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for everyone who listened to my story. Yeah. Um, make sure to subscribe to uh, the channel. <laughs> thank the you. Like. Yeah, I, let me know in the comments what is your most insightful thing from go. the she, podcast. She, she <laughs> hand that for me. Thank you very much. <laughs>